so um, yeah, as well as doing my sort of time lapse videos, um, I just thought that I'd like sometimes just film a few minutes of me just painting um, in real time. Um, you know, I'm sort of talking right now as I paint. Um, not really got much idea what I'm going to say, but I just thought it might make another sort of interesting style of video um, and just another way to get more videos up as well. Because, uh, you know, people say that they like just watching people draw um, in, in real time. You know, I've sometimes been just sat there doodling at a friend's house or at a party or just in a bar or whatever, and, and people will just sort of sometimes zone into. Um, into what I'm what I'm doing, and they'll just you know follow the pen or well yeah usually you know usually a pen when I'm doodling out and about um, and they'll just sort of follow patterns that I'm doing and they're sort of um, just you know mesmerised and just enjoying watching what's going on there um, so yeah just uh, sort of painting with. Uh, if you can hear that clicking, um, there's one. Uh, that clicking is just my other camera um, sort of taking a photograph every few seconds, um, and that's how I make the time lapses. I, you know, I compile all those photographs together um, and sort of turn it into a video, then and add some music and a little bit of uh, footage of something else and a bit of this, a bit of that, and uh, that's how I make those time-lapse videos and um, yeah uh, I quite, I'm quite enjoying making those although it is a bit of a bit of a lengthy process um, what's that it's uh, it's, it's fun um, I could probably produce like one of those a week maybe uh, maybe more if I'm doing like quicker drawings which I'm planning to do maybe more just one hour two hour drawings um, sped up into a few minutes that would be another way to just like get loads of nice visual sort of videos out there and more music. I need to produce more music, that's tough. It's just tough to sort of balance all these things because like I try to spend most of my time uh, when I'm working actually do it, you know, in the act of painting. Um, but then when you're trying to produce videos as well and, and music, it can become a bit, um, they're all sort of competing for, for your time then and it becomes a maybe more time consuming than you might think. Um, but, you know, I'm finding a happy balance uh, as I go along and it's, it's good practice to sort of get into that routine and finding a good good balance and way to make things happen. Um, so as you can see, I've just got this, uh, this orange um, paint at the moment um, and I'm just sort of going in between uh, a lot of these sort of blues, yellows and greens that have made up this bottom bottom section of this painting. Um, just because orange is a, is a good sort of, uh, I don't know, I, I've sort of seen it as a bit of a metal colour at the moment and I feel like there's a sort of, um, I don't know what I'm on about there, <laughs> I just feel like there's a sort of metal feel to this bottom part of the painting. Um, what I'm going to be doing to this piece ultimately is uh, if I can just grab another piece. I'm going to be doing a similar thing like what I did um, to this one. You can see that with this sort of masked uh, edges, uh, with sort of emulsion paint, and then sort of these fades on those lines, sort of um, that. Well, that's going to happen to this as well. Um, maybe more, more of a complex pattern. <coughs> Uh, we might increase in complexity each time because that one's just like a, a sort of a oval type shape. And this one might maybe do a more complex thing, but um, so what like I'm doing at the moment is just sort of preparing towards that um, sort of with complex max. So a lot of this, like these edges, um, if I do go for another sort of simple oval shape, a lot of this might get masked. Um, although I might go for another sort of kind of shape, you know, might be more tree like things and maybe some columns. I'm not sure yet, we'll see sort of what it what it feels um, what it feels like needs to happen with this one. Maybe it'll be the same as the last one and then we'll have a sort of a series going of uh, these sort of ovule um, shapes. 
but at the moment, yeah, it's just about sort of building up layers of um, pattern uh, and just, you know, just enjoying this process because if I can enjoy this process that I'm doing right now, then, you know, the image that it creates um, will be en enjoyable, I believe. It will be sort of free-flowing and, you know, there'll be good colours, happy colours and I think it's in the, in the state of mind um, that we apply to the act of, of creating. Uh, yeah, I'm just waffling on now, what am I saying? Uh, there's... Oh yeah, uh, I'm calling these pieces, if I do keep going with a similar sort of shape, I'm calling them the Fires fires series um so that first one that you we've just seen and um that i've got a video of i'll flash uh, the link to that video up on screen um is called i called it uh, shaman's fire um and i called that one shaman's fire because um there's sort of a lot of greens uh, going on in it and it just has this sort of natural maybe sort of jungle feel and i can imagine like um a shaman in the jungle or uh, something that I feel as though that's his um, I don't know sort of his mind is green and natural and organic uh, and that's why I called it the shaman's fire by fire uh, sorry this camera just stopped every now and again, every 200 photographs the camera that's taking photographs um, it finishes a folder and it stops so I just have to um, Basically, I'll show you. I've got this uh, pair of elastic bands and like a little plastic block thing. Um, I just sort of holding down the shutter button so that I can put the camera in continuous photograph mode. And as you can see there, and it thinks that my finger is constantly on the button, and so it'll just keep taking photographs because it hasn't got like a time lapse function where you can just set it doing that without that physical hack type thing. Um, yeah, I know why I said metal now. Um, I feel like the sort of green, some of those greens, like like copper. I think it might, I think it's copper that sort of does the. Does it go green, copper, or something? And I feel like this orange that's coming in between it now sort of looks like rusty water or something like that. Um, I don't know. That doesn't sound very visually pleasing, rusty water, but. I kind of quite like the contrast between the greens and the oranges. Just trying to set this camera back up there now. Oh, it's a bit unsteady. Anyway, that'll do. Um, what was I saying? I lost. I've totally gone off on like two tangents there. Uh, oh yeah, Sherman's fire. fire. When I say fire, I mean like. What do I mean by fire? Um, it could be a physical. I mean, you know, everybody. Um, has had fires, whether it's the tri you know the tribesmen of old um, would you know obviously dance and sing around fi fires. Have, you know, gone uh, back with the history of humanity for well, God knows how long it's. But when I say fire, I sort of mean a more men uh, sort of a psych psychological fire, like a, a creative energy, perhaps. Um, can be described as a fire. It's a great analogy to view creative spirit as fire, um, because like a fire, we have to build a creative spirit up. We have to build it up slowly. Um, you know, from small twigs. These are like small creative impulses, and as we gradually build the fire up, bigger and bigger twigs. You know, more and more sort of. Create, we just like allow the creativity to flow, keep putting effort into into the building of that. Then before long, it starts to take care of itself. You know, when the fire is big enough, um, it will. You know, it's, it's easier to maintain. It's not liable to get blown out by a bit of wind, even a bit of rain um, won't dampen it. If, the, if you know, if you can get the fire uh, growing, then you can just. You know, then all you need to do is keep keep fuel in it, and that's just coming back to the studio on a daily basis um, and you're golden, you know, your, your fire's consistent and it's there uh, and so that's what I mean when I'm saying fire and you know, the, I suppose the different styles of these images um, will determine 
how um, what what kind of fire it is like. You know, I've described why it was the shaman's fire because it's all, sort of organic and jungly, um, and maybe shapeshifty as well. That one over there. Um, this one, I'm sort of leaning towards the name of something like Alchemist's Fire or um, sort of al you know alchemic fire, something like that. Uh, and because you know the metal thing, um, alchemists are obviously uh, you know we we sort of understand alchemists as being interested in metals and uh, the transmutation of metals. And so this because this one for me has got quite a metallic feel. Um, I'm likely to to sort of call this. Uh, Alchemist's Fire, but you know, th these titles are, are not important, they could just as easily be untitled and you know, what, what you get is the image. Um, but, but I think for my own purposes I do like to sort of title these images, they sort of, they do something for me, the titles, they sort of remind me what my state of mind was when I um, created it and they, um, you know, just serve the purpose of allowing you to share the image as well. Um, like rather than just having untitled one, untitled two, untitled three. Yeah, fair enough. But I think titles with works of art do serve a purpose. Um, and yeah, sometimes they might take away from the image. Sometimes they might add to it. Um, but I don't think that relationship. That, uh, an artwork's title has to the image is important because if the image is, I suppose, good, effective, then it speaks for itself. You know, it doesn't matter what that title is. That's that'll be forgotten if the image is, is strong enough, is powerful enough. Um, right, I have waffled on there for way too long. I'm going to stop that. <laughs> so, yeah.